Hello everyone, I'm here with another Linux tutorial on Porteous. This is going to be troubleshooting issues you may face on Porteous Linux if you installed it onto a laptop. So the two issues I'm going to be troubleshooting are screen brightness issues. As you can see on this current setup I have, I'm on a laptop right now and I have no setting for altering my screen brightness. If I try to use the function keys to do it, it doesn't do anything. The second one is when I was on Windows, I used to have it set up to where if I double tap on the trap pad, it will read that as a right click. With this current setup, after installing Porteous Linux, it doesn't work anymore. Luckily, I do have a right mouse button, but I'd still like to have that double tap right click feature. And both of those things, I'm going to walk you through it, they're pretty simple to fix. So the very first thing you do, make sure you're connected to the internet. Either by Ethernet or Wi-Fi is fine. Open up the terminal, type SU, because we will be needing super user privileges. The default password is tour, unless you changed it, so enter that in. And that's T-O-O-R, by the way. Then we update our repos. USM, tax sign U, all. Just like that, we hit enter, starts updating. And after about a minute or so, our packages are all up to date. Now we can start downloading the tools we need. Now I'm going to be a little bit mean to you on the first one. I'm not just going to give you the answer. I'm going to walk you through on how to find the answer. So we know we're looking for a package that can help us uh, adjust screen brightness settings, right? So we can use the tax K flag for USM to search by keyword, and our keyword can be, can be brightness. We do that. comes back with X backlight. If we're unsure if this is what we want or if this tool is actually going to do what we need it to do, uh, we can always use the tack I flag or X backlight and it will give us more info. It says X backlight, adjust the black, uh, backlight brightness where supported. This is exactly what we want, so we're going to download it. To do that, USM, tack G, X backlight. It now uh, asks us some questions. One for X backlight. You enter. Yes, why not? Enter to start downloading now. I leave the custom path blank. And it says it's been installed to temp USM. So if I cd to temp USM and do ls, here it is, X backlight. So the this is great for a Slackware package, but we're Porteous, so we do need to convert that into an XEM module. We'll do TXZ to XEM, which is a utility included in Porteous Linux. You will need the DevL tools to do that. And all we do is give it the name of our application. We hit enter, it does its thing, we type ls again. Now we still have that txz package. We also have an xzm module, which is what we want. So we can activate it just like that. And we can confirm it's working just simply by typing x backlight in the terminal and it gives me the percentage of my screen brightness. So 100, that's pretty high. You know, if I was unplugged, that can drain my battery pretty fast. So we can open up its man page and we can see there's really not much to it. So uh, the tack get flag will give us the current percentage of the screen brightness. The tack set flag if followed by any uh, any percent number is going to set our brightness to that number. 
So we can go into our terminal, type x backlight 50%, oops, tax set 50%, and now our screen dims halfway. You probably won't see the screen dim on the recording, that's just the way I'm recording it, sorry. But take my word for it, it is changing. If I type 25, it gets even darker. At any time, if I forget what it's at, I can do the tack get flag, and it will tell me what it's at. Set that to 90. I do the get thing again. It tells me my screen brightness is now at 90%. This is comfortable. I'll keep it at that. However, there is one more step we have to do to make sure that this persists across the reboot. We have to move our XDM module to our Porteous modules directory. On me, I have that in, on SDB1, Porteous modules, and that's all we need. Now it should persist across reboots. So now we have a slightly more challenging task, configuring our trackpad to the way we like it. And to do that, I'm going to be nice and give you the answer. The program or the tool we need is X input. So USM, tag key, X input as one word. We hit enter, we follow the prompts. For those of you who never used X input before, it's a pretty powerful, pretty low level tool. And it will allow you to uh, change out some of the button mappings on your trackpads, pads, even mouses if you have like a USB mouse or something like that, you can configure those with X input too. So we just created our package. You can see we have it right there. So we're gonna convert it into an XEM module like we did with the other one. ULS again, you can see we now have our module. So I'm going to activate it. It says, well done, the module is active. So now we can type in X input into our command line and we get a huge output. Let me make that bigger. If we do X input double tack list, it will give us all the devices we have plugged in that X input has control over. So you can even see that we can do things to our power buttons and sleep buttons and so forth. The one we want is our touchpad, so that's going to be this one right here, touchpad. The only thing we really have to take note of is that it is ID 10. Now since X input is a pretty crazy application, if you've never seen it before, I'll have the man page out so you guys can see it while I work on our stuff. So, the man page can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of information in here and it works at a pretty low level. The one we want, uh, the one flag we really care about is gonna be set button map. And that is right here. So we can change our button map, typing x input, tack sign, right, double tack, set, button, oops, map, just like that. Now the first argument has to be our device. So as we can see here, in my case, I have touchpad at ID 10. For you, it might be different. It could be 14, 13, you know, anything. So whatever the ID number next to where it says your touchpad, 
that is the number you will enter for device. So I enter 10. Now from here, it's just map button one, map button two, etc. And by default, it's going to be set to one, two, three, four, five, six. So at any time, if you screw anything up, you can set everything back to normal doing something like this. So this is how uh, my crap pad is currently set up. But it doesn't work the way I want. You know, I would, I can right click with the button, but if I try right clicking by double tapping, it doesn't quite do what I want it to. And I just lost my place. Okay, here we are. So what we can do is uh, really we just have to play with the uh, keys a little bit. So I can try switching the three to a two. See if that does what I want. And then the effect should be almost instantly. So I can now try double tapping. That's not what I wanted it to do. I wanted a little menu to pop up. It didn't do that. So obviously that's not the setup I want. So I can try make going one, three, two, four, five, six. And that does it. However, now when I right click with the mouse with the physical mouse button, it doesn't work. It does something else. So I can assume now that the third field is for my right mouse button. This second one is for uh, a two finger touch. So I do one, three, three, four, five, six, enter. That works when I double tap. That works when I use the mouse button. Cool. So this is exactly how I want to do it. Check and make sure everything else works. You can scroll up and down. Um, you can single tap things. You can use the left mouse button. As long as everything works, then this is the setting you want. However, this isn't going to persist across a reboot. And it's not going to be as easy as moving the module over. We will do uh, the move command for X input. And we'll move it to our modules folder. That will allow X input to persist across the reboot. So when I reboot, I'll still have the X input command in my system. It's not, however, going to, to uh, remember the settings that I've plugged into the button map. So where I'm at currently, I'm still going to have to enter this command every time I reboot my computer if I want my button map to be like this in its ideal state. And that's certainly, that's certainly a valid way to do it if you really want to type in that command, but we can make it easier. module is going to be activated at runtime. Unfortunately, it's not going to necessarily execute this command at runtime to give me the default mouse settings I want. So to do that, we could go to System Tools, Cordius Settings Center. It's going to ask for a password, and again, by default, that's TOOR, T-O-O-R, unless you changed it already. Now the setting we care about is this icon with the little boot. The set of boots is where we change our boot options. Kind of cute. So we want to change startup scripts. Oops. So we just click this icon here. And now it asks for the command we want to run at startup. All we do is we highlight this working command Control-Shift-C to copy from a terminal, or you can right-click to copy. And then Control-V to paste, or you can right-click to paste. And then you hit OK. And now it says your commands were saved as such and such, and will run at next boot. That's good. That's all we need to do. And I just showed you how to 
Uh, oh, whoops. It says you are currently, you are not currently saving your Porteous changes. Would you like to create a module? Yes, we do want to do this. I almost missed this step. The PSC settings are saved to your modules folder and will be activated next time you boot. So we can actually CD to that directory where they claim the changes were made. And as you can see, I now have PSC settings in here. So this module is also going to activate at boot, which is going to run my X input command. That's great. So now everything's working. So that's really it. That's all there is to it. In this tutorial, I've gone over how to adjust screen brightness controls, um, X backlight, get, you can set it to something just like that. Pretty easy. I also showed you how to install all those things and make them persist across the reboots. I'll also show you some stuff with X input, how to use that, and how to set the button map on a trap pad or touch pad so that way you can get it just how you like.